Today's video is part of a series of videos where we are doing the biggest upgrade that we have done to date on Eleanor. We are changing out our entire electrical system. My name is Joe and I'm one half of two crazy campers and after losing a combined weight of more than 200 pounds We discovered we had so much more energy for activities Come along with us as we explore the great outdoors and join us on a brand new adventure And today's adventure is taking us to our keto studio Welcome to two crazy keto studio if you didn't know we have another channel It is our main channel called two crazy ketos where we basically discuss and document our weight loss, help people build a community for the keto lifestyle. And if you haven't seen that channel, I will leave a link for it right up here. But today's video is going to be taking us into another episode of Upgrading Eleanor. Now, if you're new to our channel, Upgrading Eleanor is a series that we started a couple years ago where we basically make changes to our 2019 Grand Design Imagine 2600 RB. We decided that rather than trying to find an RV that fits our needs and has everything we want, why not build the perfect RV? Why not take the RV we have and make changes to it and have it just the way we want it? And we've done different things like uh, changing out the refrigerator to a 12 volt, putting electric stabilization jacks, changing out the stairs, and a couple other things. Today's video is part of a series of videos where we are doing the biggest upgrade that we have done to date on Eleanor. We are changing out our entire electrical system. Right now in our RV Eleanor, we have a standard converter and then we have a single Battleborn 100 amp hour battery. Well, we're taking all that out and we're changing it, adding in a whole bunch of batteries, a whole bunch of solar and an inverter. Why? Because Rachel and I want to do more traveling. We want to explore this country and part of exploring the country is going to be going into like BLM land and doing some boondocking. So we need to make sure we have enough power. Let's face it, Rachel wants air conditioning. She wants to have enough power to run that air conditioning for at least a little bit of time so that we can cool things down. I mean, that that's definitely part of it. But overall, we need power so that we don't get stuck out there. So we've got a series of videos for changing out the entire electrical system in our RV Eleanor, and it's broken down into several videos. So we have a video on the overall changes that we've done walking through the entire system. We have a video on the solar panels. We have a video on the batteries themselves, installing the batteries. And then we have today's video, which is adding in the converter, the charger, as well as the inverter. And here's the cool thing about this series of videos. This is very easy to do. Now I do wanna say I do have some basic knowledge on electrical work and 12 volt and also I'm blessed to have a son who is a master electrician. I will actually leave a link for his company down below if you are in the central Florida area and need an electrician either for your RV or for your home, it definitely could possibly help you out. But here's the thing, if you don't have any knowledge on electrical, I would definitely consider reaching out to a qualified electrician or somebody who can help you on your RV. With that being said, these upgrades are very, very simple because we're gonna be using an all-in-one system. Now, in full disclosure, I do wanna say today's video as well as all of the other videos in this electrical upgrade series are partially sponsored by Signature Solar. Signature Solar is an amazing online company that has a wide variety of solar products. They pretty much have everything that you need, whether you're upgrading your RV, your home, a cabin on your homestead, or even trying to create a battery backup system. They have things like inverters, converters, wire, batteries, and solar panels themselves. Personally, I think they have some of the best batteries on the market for the price, 
and they will even help you design your system. So if you have any kind of battery needs, solar needs, inverters, converters, whatever you need, check out Signature Solar. I will leave a link for it down below in the description. All of the major components for the upgrades that I'm doing in this series did come from Signature Solar, and I did get a small discount on purchasing those products in exchange for making these videos. With that being said, I had already decided that I was going to use the different products that I'm using in this upgrade. I'd already decided which inverters I was gonna use. I already had decided that I was gonna use the signature solar batteries. And so after I had made that decision of how I was going to you know, do my entire upgrade, I reached out to them and asked them if they would be interested in working with me so that I could make these videos and show you how I'm doing my upgrade. One of the biggest reasons I wanted to do that is because I feel like the way we are going to be upgrading Eleanor is an extremely cost-efficient method and you're gonna be able to have an amazing electrical system. So with that being said, let's get into this first part where we talk about the inverter that we're putting inside of Eleanor. I feel a little crowded in in this shot with both of these inverters next to me at the same time. But there's a reason I have them both here at the same time. Because up to about an hour ago, I wasn't sure which one I was going to use. That's actually why I have both of them right now. And it really came down to only one thing. Do you think you could figure out what that one thing is before I actually tell you? I don't know, take a guess. Let me know down in the comment section of what it is. But here's the thing. I spent hundreds of hours watching YouTube videos and researching electrical upgrades in RVs. I mean, ask Rachel, she got sick of hearing electrical talk in our bedroom all night long. I watched probably every video that Jared from All About RVs has. I watched all of the different upgrade videos from Irene Iron Travels. I mean, you name it, I watched it. I watched a lot of uh, Will Prowess videos. I really was researching what is the best battery, what is the best inverter, and it took me a long time to figure out what I wanted to do. Originally, I was going to use like the Victron MultiPlus. I was couldn't figure out what batteries. Do I want to use Battleborn? Do I want to use Victron? I didn't know what I wanted to do until I came across these units. And these units are amazing because these are all-in-one systems. So if you've watched any videos on people who are upgrading their RVs, they generally have like the Victron MultiPlus or a different type of inverter, they have a solar charge controller, they have a lot of different things. Well, these two inverters do everything in one unit. And that's why this installation is going to be ridiculously easy. Now again, if you have zero experience or are at all nervous about working with the electrical system on your RV, please reach out to a professional because you can hurt yourself if you do things wrong. You are still working with electricity. Now that I've said that, if you're comfortable around electricity and you have some basic knowledge on 12 volt as well as AC systems, and you follow all of the safety protocols, you should have no problem doing this install in your RV. So let's talk about these two units. What are they? These are all in one units. What does that mean? It means everything that you need other than your batteries and your wires contained in this unit. So in here, you're gonna have your battery charger, your transfer switch, your solar charger, you're gonna have your inverter. Everything you need is in here. And if you use certain batteries, it is a closed loop system and everything talks to each other. It makes for a super easy install. Now, both of these are from EG4. And I, like I said, I did get them from Signature Solar. They come with a great warranty and have some amazing features. So let's talk about what the differences are. Obviously, one difference is size. So this is obviously much larger than this one. This one here is a 3000 watt inverter. This is a 6500 watt inverter. This one is probably overkill for most people. And this is the one that I really would like to install in my RV. I don't need 6,500 watt inverters, but there are some features on this one that I really like. So let's talk about some of the specs on this unit right here. This unit has a 3,000 watt inverter, which is more than enough for most of us in an RV. And as a matter of fact, that is actually more than the Victron MultiPlus that I was considering putting in the RV. Uh, it has a 5,000 watt max PV input, 
And since I don't have 5,000 watts of solar on my roof, that's more than enough for me. It has a max charging current of 80 amps, and it has a max MPPT voltage of 500 volts DC. Now, when it comes to efficiency, uh, if you do any kind of research on your battery and your inverters, you'll know that uh, it's not really efficient. You do lose some power going from battery to inverting to AC. Well, this has an inverter efficiency of 94%. So you're not losing a whole lot of that battery as you're converting from battery over into your AC current. Uh, it has a PV, your solar to inverter efficiency of 97%. So really, really efficient unit. Uh, now it also has a 6,000 watt surge for five seconds. One of the biggest drawbacks on this unit though is when it comes to your solar, because it does have your solar controller in here, you need to have a minimum of 120 volts DC. So figure you're gonna need a minimum of four to five panels on your roof run in series to be able to use the solar charge controller on this. It also has an idle power as the inverter just sitting and not doing anything of less than 50 watts. And it also has like a power saving mode where it's using less than 15 watts. One of the biggest advantages that this thing has though is its size. You can see right here, look at how small this is. This is everything you need. The only thing from here you need is wires and then your battery. So you don't have a solar charge controller and, and all of these other things all over your wall. Everything is enclosed in here. And it also, by the way, looks cool. Um, but if you're curious about size dimensions, uh, it is 17.6 inches tall, 11.6 inches wide, and it is four inches deep. And here's the best part. It weighs 21 and a half pounds. And this unit at the time that I'm recording this video is $660. And again, I'll leave a link for Signature Solar down below. That's where I bought it from. But $660 gives you your inverter. It gives you your solar charge controller. It gives you your battery charge controller. And the entire unit talks to each other and can talk to your batteries depending on which batteries you use. I love everything about this unit. So let's move over to this one. This unit is very similar to this unit, except for, aside from the fact that it's larger, this one has a 6,500 watt inverter, which is more than most of us need in an RV. Uh, it has a max PV input of 8,000 watts, which is definitely more than any of us need in our RV. It has a max charging current of 120 amps. It also has a max MPPT voltage of 500 volts DC. When it comes to efficiency, this one's not quite as efficient as this one. This one comes in at a battery to inverter efficiency of 90%. Like I said, this one is 94% and a PV to inverter uh, at 93%. Whereas again, this one is 97%. So even though this unit is not as efficient as this unit, this one does win out in another category, aside from the fact that it's a 6,500 watt inverter. Where this one really wins out is with the solar charge controller in two aspects. First, this one only has a 90 volt DC minimum, whereas again, this one had a 120 volt DC minimum. What does that mean? Like I said, this one, you're probably going to need four or five solar panels on your roof run in series to get to that 120 volts minimum. This one, you're probably gonna be able to get away with three or four, but it has something else that's even better. This one has two MPPT inputs. And what that means is, is you can have two completely separate strings of solar. And that's why I really struggled on which unit to buy. I mean, think about being able to have, say, 1,400 watts of solar on your roof like we do, and then going out and using that most of the time. But then if you go on an extended trip, maybe like a month in BLM land out in Utah, being able to pull out another four or five panels out of your pass-through, laying them out, and adding another 1,000 watts of solar to your RV. That, to me, is a game changer, having those two separate things. Not only can you add on to your solar, but let's say you go someplace where you're completely blocked out on the roof because of trees, and then there's a field over on the side, you can take those other panels, lay them out on the field, and at least get those, you know, three, four, five, whatever amount of panels that you have connected laying on the ground. That, to me, is a game changer. 
Now, going back to the efficiency, aside from the fact that this one is not as efficient on your battery to inverter or your solar to your inverter, it also consumes more power. Whereas this one consumes less than 50 watts in your idle mode and less than 15 in power saving, this one is gonna consume somewhere around 70 watts just sitting around. So that is something to think about. You know, if you only have one or two batteries, it is consuming about 70 watts just when it's running idle. The other thing is, this unit here is $1,299, which honestly, is not bad. Consider what you're getting. I mean, I was looking at the Victron Multi Plus and that unit alone was that much money and I still was gonna have to buy solar charge controllers. I was still gonna have to buy a bunch of other things. You're getting everything all in one for $1,300. So this unit's 659, this unit is $1,299. Now, the other thing that's really cool about this unit over this unit is this control screen right here. So on the 3000 watt one, the control screen is built in, you can't take it off. Everything is here, but it does come with a Wi-Fi dongle so that you can connect this to an app and control everything through the app. This one also has your Wi-Fi app, but this control panel you can see here uh, I don't think the camera lights are gonna show it right, but if I angle it, you can see this piece, two screws on the bottom comes off and you could mount this anywhere in your RV. And when you mount it in your RV, you just run an ethernet cable and now you have the entire control panel everywhere. So I'm mounting the unit in my pass-through with this unit, I'm gonna have to mount it and if I don't wanna use the app, I'm gonna have to go out and control everything here. Whereas this one, I can almost mount it in an inaccessible like location and then move this control panel and still be able to get to everything. Now the other thing about the 3000 watt one is it comes with everything you need. Uh, this one comes with some things, but it does need other things. Like it doesn't come with a circuit breaker or everything. So this unit here comes with, like I said, your Wi-Fi dongle. It comes with your manual. It comes with battery cables. It comes with a circuit breaker and it comes with all of your communication cables. So which one did I choose? Let's go find out. So I ended up choosing the 3000 watt version. And like I said earlier, up till about two hours ago, I wasn't sure which one I was gonna put in the RV. I mean, with that 6,500 watt one, I really like the fact that you can have two separate MPPT inputs. I really, really like that idea. Plus, I really wanted to be able to have that control panel and mount it in the RV up by the kitchen. The problem is size. So our pass-through from the floor to the ceiling is about 28 inches, and that unit is 24 inches tall. So it does pull in air from the bottom and then exit it out the top for the cooling. And I felt like I just didn't have enough room to have proper cooling on that unit. Now, when I talked to Signature Solar, they said I could turn it on its side. You just couldn't put it upside down and you couldn't lay it flat either from the ceiling or the bottom. But I still looked at when I turned it on its side, I didn't think I was gonna have enough room for it to really cool efficiently. So even though I really wanted that unit, I decided to go with this unit because it's lighter, it's smaller, and it's still 3000 watts, which is more than enough of what I need. Also, it's even easier to install. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out where I wanted to install the inverter in the pass-through. And had I done the 6500 watt one, I was gonna install it all the way down there, uh, right next to where all the wires and the plumbing is. That's actually why I still have that uh, board off because if I had the 6500 watt one, I wasn't gonna have to get to it. So I'll still have to frame that in. But since I'm doing the 3000 watt one, we're gonna put it right up here near the entrance to the pass-through so that I can just kind of come into the door right here and control everything. But since this is very thin plywood and we do only have a couple of studs, I'm gonna mount another piece of plywood on top of here and then screw the inverter into that. So they do recommend that you don't install the inverter directly on wood and that's actually the case for most inverters and I know most people do anyway and it's probably not that big of a deal. But I figure better safe than sorry. So I'm actually gonna mount this thin piece of sheet metal onto the front of that wood and then we're gonna put this as a barrier between the inverter and the wood. As far as mounting this, this actually cools through the bottom. There is a fan right here. It's gonna suck air in. Also, this is where all of your cables are gonna go in. And then 
it exhausts it out the top. You have one on this side and then you have one on the other side. So we're gonna mount this all the way up on the ceiling so that we can get the most amount of airflow underneath it. It also gives us plenty of room to run all of our cables. So all of our wire connections are gonna come in through the bottom. So they're behind this panel. There is two screws that hold that panel on. There is one right here and one on the other side. I have already removed them. So we're gonna just pull this down and then I can show you all of the connections. So right here is gonna be your battery wires. They're gonna come in again through the bottom. Over here, we have our solar panel. Here we have our AC out, and here is the AC in, which is the wire that is coming from our 30 amp plug in the back. Okay, now it's raining and my back is getting all wet, but we're gonna keep working because we're mostly gonna be inside and we are not working with live electricity. So don't worry about me getting electrocuted being in the rain. We're just gonna run wires, but nothing is going to be connected. Uh, this is gonna be the most difficult part of the install and it's not super hard, it's just time consuming and probably the biggest pain part because other than this, everything is like a wire from here through the wall and that's it. So this is just going to be time consuming. We have to run the AC wires. So we need to run two sets of wires. We need to go from here to the breaker panel that is inside the cabin. And then we need to go from the breaker panel back here to the inverter. So you have an AC in and an AC out. Right now you have your 30 amp shore power. That is going from where you plug in in the back. It goes underneath the RV up into that breaker panel into your 30 amp. And then your 30 amp distributes power to all of your breakers, to your charge controller, all of that stuff. We need to disconnect that wire. And then we need to basically have a junction box where we can connect that wire to a run of this wire that's gonna come up here to the AC end. Now I haven't decided whether or not I want to have a junction box or I want to get a hardwired surge protector. Uh, I'm leaning towards the hardwired surge protector. I need to look and see how much they cost since I do have the plug-in one already. But I think that would be easier than trying to put another box and all that kind of stuff in there. Then that's going to plug into AC in here. And then we need to run another wire from here back to where that 30 amp was. Also, while we're in that breaker panel, we need to disconnect the battery charger because that's not gonna be charging our batteries anymore. This is charging our batteries. So again, it's not like hard. We just have to run the wires. Now, the wire that I chose to use is this wire from Encore. This is 8.3 Marine Romex, and you can see there how thick the wire is and how thick the insulation is. And this is, like I said, Marine Romex. It is designed for wet applications. So it's designed to be used on boats and stuff. And that's why I chose to use this. Now, I could have used 10.3. I talked to my son who, again, like I said, is a master electrician. And he said for the 3000 watt inverter, 10.3 is more than enough. And that's what I was going to use. But I chose the 8.3 for two reasons. Number one, I wasn't sure up until a couple hours ago whether I was gonna use the 3000 watt or the 6500 watt. If I chose the 6500 watt, I felt more comfortable having the thicker gauge wire, even if I didn't need it. Also, when I purchased this on Amazon, and I will leave a link for it down below, the 8.3, believe it or not, was $45 cheaper than the 10.3. So since I need the wire anyway, why not use the better wire that was cheaper? So this is the flexible Romex. And like I said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down the or out down the RV underneath and we're gonna put it like on the other side of the the you know insulation. So there's at least something protecting it and then come back in. So what I'm gonna do is right now I'm gonna go down and remove the chloroplast and see like what's down there and where I could run the wire and then probably where I can come back up inside of the cabin. So it's a little hard to fill this because of the angle, but here is our underbelly, which is just held up with a few screws. And then they actually have this like foam filler uh, sealing it all up. So we'll have to replace all that. But we just pulled down like three screws and you can see 
we have plenty of room to work with. So here is all of our wires, and those are all running back to the distribution panel. So we might be able to just pull down one side of the underbelly. The cool thing is, is this right here feeds into the pass-through. Well, you couldn't ask for better placement. I drilled the hole as close to the sidewall as I could. That's where it came out and look at where it comes in. So we're gonna run the wires in here, up and AC in, AC out. That is perfect placement. I couldn't ask for anything better. Don't mind the mess in here. We just got the RV back from getting the roof repaired. So still have to put things away. I got some solar panel brackets and stuff over there. Uh, we've got all of the underbelly down. So now we've moved inside to get behind the breaker panel and see what we have to work with and where we could run the wire down. I think, if I remember right, there's actually a hole that already runs into the underbelly. And if that's the case, this will make it much easier because we can simply feed the wire down, run it up through, and we're gonna try to run both wires at the same time. What I'm gonna do is just like mark the end so I know which one is which. So here is our breaker panel. And if we open it up, there's just a couple of screws holding this whole thing in. So we got one there and we got one there and we can see everything we have here. So we have the AC side power disconnected right now. 12 volt is still on, so we're on battery power. This is the 12 volt side. So things like our lights, water pump, stuff like that. This is the AC. So all of our outlets, our air conditioner, which is this 20 amp fuse. This 30 amp is the main. That's where we're gonna connect the new power to. And then this one here is actually our Wii Boost. This bottom one right here, this 15 amp, that's the converter that charges up our current lithium battery. So what we're gonna do is basically disconnect this wire, put it on here and disconnect that one since we're not gonna need what's in there and just take this whole breaker out. We're not gonna need that breaker. Unless we wanna put another outlet and we might do that. This is the converter that's all gonna get disconnected. So now we need to do is get behind this panel to see if we can get the wire down. And you just have like six screws or eight screws here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull all those out. So here is our rat's nest. And uh, this is how they leave your RV. I mean, look at all of that wire. It's just like insane the way they do this. Uh, so over here you have your heating ducts and there is a lot of room in here. That's why I'm seriously considering getting the inline surge protector and just kind of sticking it in there. I could even put like a little dummy door over there to get to it. So let's take a closer look because if you look, you have a giant hole here and I think that leads into the underbelly. So yes, that is the underbelly. So we can simply run the wires right into there and then um, run everything down through. This is actually gonna be much easier than we thought it was. So I'm gonna go get the wire. We're gonna go ahead and feed it down. So I will say this Marine Romex is extremely easy to work with. It's very, very flexible. So I'm not gonna have any problem pulling it through. So what I did was I measured out one length. I gave myself about an extra foot on each side just in case, but this stuff is expensive. I think this roll was like $150. So I measured out one length and I marked both ends with black tape. Uh, this way I know one of them is for AC in, one of them is for AC out. Then the other one, I just have where I cut it, but I've left it on the roll so I can pull through and whatever I don't need, I can keep on the roll. So we're gonna feed it from inside of the RV, uh, down underneath, and then I'm just gonna pull everything through. So underneath here, I had previously cut this underbelly so that I could do a repair, and then I had a turnabond tape over it. So all I did was pull off that tape so that I can get underneath, and you can see right up in here, that's where all the wires are coming in. And if you look up in there, you can see those wires. So I'm gonna grab them, pull them through, feed them to the other side where I have the uh, underbelly pulled down. Okay, that wasn't so bad. We didn't even have to drill any new holes into the RV, like the floor or anything. Just this one, but uh, this is a, a small hole. I mean, you have that giant hole uh, inside of the cabin that goes down into the underbelly, which I think I'm gonna seal up. I, I don't like the fact that there is nothing sealing that hole up. I think we're gonna fill it in with some like expanding foam once we're done with all this. Uh, now all I need to do is like basically button up the underbelly, but we can do that when it's not like eight o'clock at night. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to prepare the ends of these and 
connect them up into the inverter and then we're pretty much ready to go with the batteries and the battery install is going to be in a separate video so i'm gonna get all of these pieces set up i'm gonna put some ferrules on the end and uh, then we can finish up this video so it's the next morning and thankfully it has stopped raining which is good because i really like to finish up the entire installation of this system today uh, but again it's going to be in several different videos for you guys to watch uh, most of the inverter is actually installed we've got it hanging and we ran the wires uh, the last things we need to do with the inverter is basically connect to the batteries as well as connect to the solar panel uh, which that's going to be in a different video the one other thing on this video is the circuit breaker so they do provide you with a circuit breaker that is supposed to go between the inverter and the batteries and i have it right here and you basically just mount this bracket on a wall and then you go in one side and out the other so you have a line and load on here and i'm trying to figure out where i want to install it you know i really would like to have it in there with the batteries uh, because you're going to have this one wire exposed but at the same time the batteries are under the bed which is inside of a slide which means if i needed to get to it in an emergency i would have to like open up the slide so i think we're just going to put it out here in the pass through like up high right next to the inverter this way if i needed to i can turn off the power from the batteries to the inverter like right away i would highly recommend using ferrules on your connections into the inverter uh the directions don't say to do that but because of the way you're going to be grabbing onto these wires you're going to get a much better connection if you use these wire ferrules so I'll leave a link for them from Amazon and they have different sizes. I've got like an assortment pack and then I also have some larger ones that I got from a local electrical supply house, uh, which they do have them on Amazon, but I just couldn't get them in time. But basically you just put them on and then when you crimp it, you have this nice end here where you can put it in there and the screw can really clamp down and you know you're gonna be getting a good connection on all your wires. Uh, so pretty easy to do and it definitely will clean up your install so i'm actually going to get all of these on nice and tight but then when we do a final check through all of the different connections before we turn the system on i'm going to come through with a torque screwdriver and make sure everything is down to torque right now i'm just going to give these all a good pull and make sure that nothing is coming out so everything is secure so the inverter is completely wired up on the inside uh, except for our batteries and our solar panels. But again, that is another video. So I did drill a hole from inside of the RV underneath the bed to out here to run all of my battery wires and everything. So I started on the inside, right in the corner at the lowest possible point, and I drilled straight through. And so this is uh, where we're gonna have all the wires coming out from inside. And I think we're gonna put the breaker like right here. This way it's next to the panel. And if we need to like turn off the power to the inverter very quickly, we can, but everything is out of the way and uh, less of a chance of touching any of the wires. So everything with the inverter is now installed and wired up, at least here in the pass-through, with the exception of the solar panels. Uh, we're gonna do the solar panels in a completely separate video, but I figured right now, I wanted to get everything wired up in here and then we're gonna move on to the batteries. We're gonna get the batteries installed we're gonna give the entire system a test with the batteries not hooked up to you know, like the main breaker panel and the shore power. And then if the inverter is working off of the batteries, we'll then hook up to shore power, make all those connections. And then after all of that is all said and done, then we'll move on to the solar panels. So I decided to use one gauge wire to go from the inverter to the batteries because I had it. Uh, when I was putting in the 6500 system, they recommended one gauge wire. And so I had that, but if I wouldn't have had that, I could have just used this four gauge wire, which was supplied uh, with the inverter. But I used the one gauge wire. It did make for a little bit more of a challenge to get it to fit up inside of the terminals. If I had any complaint about this, it's like trying to get this thicker wire up inside the terminal and then using the screw holes here, uh, it made for a little bit of challenge, but I was able to do it. So we have a wire coming here that supplies the inverter. It comes up here into our breaker. And then it, this feeds from here into the pass-through. 
and then that's going to feed into a T fuse, which will then feed into the bus bar. Then we have our negative, which is going to come off of a smart shunt and it's coming up here into the inverter. Over here on this side, we have our wires that are going from the AC out. So it's going from here to the panel to supply uh, power to the panel. And then this would be coming in from the 30 amp. So we do need to connect the batteries into the inverter so that everything can talk to each other. And so we're gonna take this cable right here and we're gonna plug it in right here. So that goes up in there. And then the other half of this cable is gonna go connect to our master battery. And then we're gonna connect our Wi-Fi, which is going to be this cable right here. And it's gonna go into this ethernet port. So the other half of the Wi-Fi wire is gonna go into the Wi-Fi dongle. And then I put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back of it, and we're going to mount it right here and then tie up all the wires. So now is the stressful part. We're gonna hook up the AC. So I actually started disconnecting things and forgot to turn on the camera, but let me show you what I've done so far. So this orange wire feeds in from shore power. So you have your plug that's in the back of the RV, that we plug in a short power that feeds this orange wire. So that is AC in. That wire was actually coming into the panel and then we had the hot feeding into this 30 amp breaker. The neutral was going into the neutral bus bar over here and then the ground was going into the ground bus bar. So we disconnected all that. We pulled it out of the back of the panel and then I just temporarily hooked it up to the AC in for the inverter just to make sure everything is working. So obviously it's all off right now. That is our neutral, that is our hot, that is our ground. I just tied them in to run a test to make sure it was actually getting power, and it is. So I have it disconnected, and then we are going to be putting this into a surge protector, an inline surge protector, which is going to go in that back corner. Now, the other thing I did was disconnect our converter charger. So that's what this year is. This was charging up our battery. So we had a hot, a neutral, and a ground feeding up into this breaker here and then the neutral bar and the ground bar. So I just disconnected that. I'm gonna tuck the wires in here. We're not gonna be using that at all. And now I need to actually disconnect these two wires because that also feeds into there. We don't need those anymore either. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get an Allen key for that. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to hook this wire up. This is what is actually going to come from the inverter and power all of our breakers. Okay, all done in the panel. We've completely disconnected the converter. So uh, it's not connected to 12 volt. It's not connected to AC. And then over here, we have connected the wires that actually feed in from the inverter. So we've got our black going to our 30 amp. We've got our green going to our ground, white going to the neutral bar. We've turned off all of the breakers. Now all we have to do is go turn on the inverter and hope for the best. Now, in all seriousness, I do think it's all hooked up right. I've double checked, I've triple checked everything. We have the shore power completely disconnected. So right now the RV is running solely on the batteries that are under the bed. So we have the batteries on, they're feeding into the 48 to 12 volt converter. The inverter is completely shut down. So this is just battery power right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the inverter and then we're going to come in here. We're going to test right at the panel itself, see if we're getting 120 volts. If we are, we're going to turn on the 30 amp, test it again. Then we're going to turn on a couple of the breakers and hopefully if everything goes smoothly, nothing is going to blow. If everything works well, we can put it all back together and uh, then the last thing we'll have to do is solar power. And so the first thing we're gonna do is turn on all three BMSs. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our breakers. So one, look, lights came on, that's a good sign. So now all three batteries are feeding uh, into the inverter. Now we just gotta turn on the inverter. Switch is underneath. Takes a couple of seconds. What we're looking for is the output up there in the corner to say 120 volts. There we go, 120 volts. This blinking light says that we're running solely on battery power right now. So we're looking for 120 volts. We're gonna go neutral 
And we're going to go to the hot. We've got it. We've got 120 volts. We're going to go ahead and turn on the AC. So will it start our AC? Oh my gosh, it worked. Our AC is running on battery. Now, I don't know how much battery it's using up, but the AC is running on batteries right now. This actually worked. So the inverter is installed and we had temporarily spliced together the wire that comes from the pedestal, the 30 amp in, with the wire that we ran underneath the RV that goes up to the inverter. And we did that just to make sure everything was working perfectly. And it is, I've tested everything. Uh, we're getting a power throughout the coach. Uh, we're getting 120 volts up at the inverter. So everything's working great. So we have one more thing to do and that is install our inline surge protector. So up till now, we've been using one of those surge protectors that goes on the end of your 30 amp line and then plugs up into the pedestal. And it's worked great. As a matter of fact, it saved our RV a couple years ago when we went on a trip and the electrician wired the 30 amp plug wrong. Uh, the only issue that I've had with it is I can't get it off of my plug anymore, but that's a different story. I figured now, since we're doing this entire installation, why not just put an inline surge protector? And I'm doing that for a few reasons. The biggest reason I'm doing it is because it makes the install of this entire system just a little bit easier. So remember, we had those wires spliced together that go from the 30 amp in up to the front with some wire nuts but that was temporary and it's definitely not safe. The proper way to do it would be to be putting it inside of like a box or something so that everything is protected. And if I got to do that, I figured why not just splice it together in a meaningful way, which is an inline surge protector. Now, the other reasons I want to do that is first of all, I want to change out my surge protector because the ones that you can put outside on the end of your wire like we're using, they get stolen and they get stolen a lot. So I figured why not just mount one inside of the RV and this way I don't have to worry about that at all. It's just there. So it's basically serving as my junction box, but also I'm getting this protection where I don't have to worry about somebody stealing it. And then also I wanted to like upgrade the surge protector I'm using. The one I have is what over three years old now. Uh, but this one here is from Power Watchdog. We are not sponsored by them, not affiliated. I bought this on Amazon. I will leave a link for it down below. This is the 30 amp version. But what I like about this one is number one, it has Bluetooth. So I can check everything like on my phone and see what's going on with the power. But the other thing that's nice about this one is it has a replaceable power module. So if something does happen, let's say you get a lightning strike or there is some bad surge or something, the module inside of this is replaceable. I don't have to replace the entire unit, just the module. So we're gonna go ahead and install this and then the entire inverter install is done. Now it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, make sure your RV is not plugged in and you have no power coming to the lines that you are working on. So first thing we're gonna do is take our line in, which is this orange wire. This is what is coming from the 30 amp in that you plug into the RV. And we're going to put it into the in on the power watchdog. And the in is actually on top. We've got our hot, our neutral, and our ground. So all we have to do is put these in and then screw down the terminals. Now we're gonna get the wire that goes up to the inverter and put it into the outside, which is down here on the bottom. While I was installing this inline surge protector for the inverter, it occurred to me there is a huge benefit to having your surge protector on the end of your plug going into the pedestal. When you have that external surge protector, you have the ability, and this is actually how you're supposed to do it, to take that surge protector and plug it into your 30 or 50 amp service coming out of the pedestal and make sure everything is working properly. You're looking for green lights across the board. You wanna make sure that you don't have like a cross of the neutral and the hot. Make sure everything is working great. And once you verify that everything is wired properly and you don't have any issues with the electricity, then and only then would you plug your coach in. But if you're using an inline like this, you don't have that ability because the way I would currently have this going is you got your 30 amp coming in. It's going to go to my inline surge protector, but I don't have anything turning off the electricity between the surge protector and my inverter. I mean, yes, there is a 30 amp breaker on our panel that you can and should have turned off when you're plugging your RV into the pedestal. 
And that is protecting like everything inside of the RV. So you don't have to worry about damaging any circuit boards. But what it's not protecting the way I have this wired up right now is my inverter and my charger because the wire is gonna go directly from my surge protector up to the inverter. So after consulting with my son who is an electrician, I decided to put a 30 amp switch in between. So we're gonna have our power watchdog, the wire coming out of that power watchdog, it's gonna go to a 30 amp switch that's disconnecting the hot, and then that's gonna feed up into the pass-through for the inverter and the charger. So what I did was I put an electrical box right here that is coming into this cabinet right here that's below the refrigerator. So we have the box right here. Everything's wired here. I have a 30 amp switch in the off position. I can check everything and then flip up the switch and have power. Now we can just take the power watchdog and we're gonna find a place to kind of place it in there where it's out of the way. Listen, do you hear it? There's an air conditioner running and I'm not plugged into shore power. No, my air conditioner right now is running on the EG4 3000 inverter with my battery bank and oh, by the way, this thing could run for hours and hours and hours with the battery setup I have. And you're gonna learn more about my battery setup in the next video. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you hit that bell button so that you are notified when that video goes live. So that's how I installed my EG4 3000 watt all-in-one inverter from Signature Solar. Now a few things about this installation. First, if you wanted to install the 6500 watt one that we showed at the beginning of the video, it's pretty much the same installation. So that's one thing about the installation. The other thing I wanted to mention is that though we set this up in a single phase, there is a way to use the EG4 3000 or the EG4 6500 watt in split phase. And so what I would recommend doing that if you're looking for a split phase, uh, reach out to Signature Solar. I will leave a link for them down below. Uh, if you look on the directions, which are available on their website for both the 3000 and the 6500 watt, you can read in the directions on how to set it up in split phase if that's something that you're looking to do. But overall, the installation of this thing is very easy. I mean, the hardest thing was running the wires underneath the RV, and even that was very, very simple. So in the next video, we're going to show you how I have the battery set up. So I've got three batteries that are going to be set up in parallel. That'll be in the very next video. After that, we'll do a video on the entire solar system. And then finally, we'll have a video on what can we run and how long can we run it with this system. Now, I do want to say thanks again to Signature Solar for partially sponsoring this video. And if you need any kind of solar panels, batteries, inverters, any other parts for your RV upgrade or your homestead upgrade, check out Signature Solar. I will leave a link for them down below in the description box. We really appreciate Signature Solar for sponsoring Two Crazy Campers, and we really appreciate you guys for supporting the sponsors who do support Two Crazy Campers. Now, if you got anything out of this video, please do us a favor, hit the like button on this video. It really does help build the channel, but more importantly, it lets us know what kind of videos you guys are looking to see. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so that you are updated every time we upload a new video. And until next time, happy camping.